I know so many Lions fans mm. from my time in Ann Arbor. Mm. So many. You know, when they were trying to restore the roar. I I I I remember in ninety in, in pardon me in eighty seven or eighty eight, the Jets came and played the Lions in the Silverdome, and uh, I went to that game. And when we walked into the Silverdome, I swear to you, they told us take any seat you want. <laughs> I'm serious. That happened. We sat ten rows from the Jet back of behind the Jet sideline. We chose any of them. We chose them right on the 50. That's awesome. Walked in. We didn't buy tickets in the 50. And by the way, but there wasn't, you know, like game time tickets or anything right. back then. Right. We had to go up to the box office, pick up our tickets, you know, paper tickets, and then hand them to an usher who basically looked at us like, what are you, crazy? Just choose whatever just, seat you want. I swear to you that happened. That happened. And then, of course, you know, the Wayne Fonts era, the Restore the Roar, which is the last time that they won a, um, a divisional crown in a home playoff game in, in 91, and I was already gone. But, of course, I, I keep in touch with a ton of people from, from my Michigan days, and a handful of them are, are, are diehard Lions fans, and they cannot believe what is happening right now. Didn't they show what an 89 year old gentleman yeah. who's a 66 year season ticket holder? Yep. And 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 Tarico gave terrific voice. He lives in Ann Arbor. He gives terrific voice. He gave a, a great voice to what folks there are feeling right now. That they cannot believe that the Lions are not only good, but good enough, and also uh, to be feared. To be feared, and and I think Dan Campbell is the personification of that, and. You know, their quarterback uh, who here in Los Angeles kind of put the Bambi in Rams, you know what I mean? And um, and he's got the red ass in him, too. I wonder if he's picking that up from his coach a little bit now. You know, I'm sure he's the same guy that he was here in Los Angeles, but the throws he's making, you give him a clean pocket. And then I'm on Ross St. Brown. I, I, this is kind of crazy. It's It's kind of like, you know, when you get – Fined for a flag you didn't you didn't get called for a penalty but you get fined. He doesn't make the Pro Bowl but he makes the All Pro list. Okay, sounds good. It's a popularity contest, I guess, for the Pro Bowl. But that's an All Pro wide receiver. I I'm I'm pleased to say, even though I thought the Rams were going to win this game, and they came close. Uh, I'm pleased to say, didn't I tell you last year Amon Ross St. Brown was a top ten wide receiver in the NFL? And he's now a first-team All-Pro. Sun God. The Sun God is dynamite. And the rest of those receivers, along with Sam Laporta, Jameer Gibbs, they, it looked like it was going to be a Gibbs game last night, Man, too. So they got the thunder and the lightning in the backfield. So Montgomery fast. brings the wood, and Gibbs brings the lightning. And the line is really stout. And then there's... There's my guy. You want to you want to change your culture, and this is what's so cool about the subset and that Venn diagram of Michigan fans in this circle and Lions fans in this circle. They 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 certainly interact. Trust me, there's a lot of Spartan in that fan base as well. That hopefully is enjoying the the week, but not as much as Wolverine fans are right now. But uh, Aiden Hutchinson is a culture changer. Yeah. Michigan, I felt it when he started balling out. A couple of his sacks, as Chris Long pointed out last night, his two sacks were were just touching Stafford when he, you know, yeah, the first one Stafford tripped behind, over his own feet, right? Yeah, and, and then Hutch he touched him. Yeah, Cooper was like, "That's a sack for Hutchinson, yeah, Dad." And I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." And he gets credit. And then there was another one where he where he was stumbling for the the uh, the line of scrimmage and fell about a yard short, and yeah. then he touched him there. But the one was, again, third down last night. Rams are driving. They need a field goal to take a lead. They could play with the clock, kick that field goal, take the lead, and maybe not leave enough time left for Goff. And Hutchinson gets to Stafford to the point where he's held. And that changed a lot of the dynamic, obviously. I'll say this for Rams fans. Puka Nakua was held. 
on that third down attempt to try and get a first. What like looked like one of those famed dig routes. He definitely had his jersey, his 17 jersey, oh, yeah. yanked. A handful of missed calls in this game. They had a lot going this game, I and, thought. And so, um, put it all together, though, the Lions came up with that first down when they did get the opportunity to get the ball back, and the Rams only had one timeout left. They got two first downs to wrap it. And the Lions move on. And I can only think of all those Lions fans that I met on campus all those years ago, right? We talked about how I looked at the Michigan Wolverines championship as a marking of time. My God, (laughs) there was no 97 for Lions fans like there was a split title for me. There was no 97. This is what Dan Campbell had to say about the atmosphere in that building after the game. That is arguably the best environment I've ever been in. That that was absolutely electric. And I think what's crazy is I was coming down for pregame warm-up, and I you could just feel it. It was humming. The building was humming. And I swear you could feel the electricity down the tunnel from where I was coming down. And it only just grew from there. So, um, man, our fans showed up in a big way. Um, that was clearly – and I thought – Man, for two years now, it's been that building's been rocking. That it was different today. That was a whole nother level, um, which is what the playoffs are all about. So our fans showed up in a big way. They helped us win this game. Nobody's laughing at Dan Campbell's uh, first press conference anymore, right? It's now used mm-hmm. as sort of a well. This is where we learned that he's just a different cat. Because, in all honesty, the Rams took a took a hunk out of him. And then they bit off both their kneecaps at the end. Because that was a physical battle. That was one of my favorite wild card games in a long time. Because Stafford showed up in that environment slinging it. He When, when he came out with that no-look sidearm, I thought, okay, he's locked. That was after Goff started the the game with a, what, the first of – three 75-yard touchdown drives to start the game. And the Rams stayed in it, made a 21-17 at half. The margin of difference was the first drive that the Rams had stalled inside the 10-yard line. And that was part of their bugaboo. You remember they lost a game in Cincinnati this year. They, they There were some red zone problems. We'll talk about the Rams later on. But for the moment, the Lions took Stafford's best punch McVay had some, and and Nakua. Boy, did they take some really tough punches from the Rams. But they wound up doing exactly what Dan Campbell had to say when he first took the gig. And I thought, this guy's not serious. He's not (laughs) serious people, you know. And and now you got to take him seriously. Because this whole eligible gate thing that you thought was going to cost him a second playoff game at home. Over. That's over. The Packers. You have to thank the Packers for that. In Detroit, isn't that interesting? Strange bedfellows. What the enemy of your enemy is your friend. Correct. So they get one, and it's going to be, you know, pretty wild when we find out who wins tonight's game has got to go to Detroit. And instead, had the Rams won that, tonight's game would have been for the right to host the Rams. Last night, Had the Rams pulled it off, tonight's game, the Eagles could have wound up watching the Cowboys get eliminated and still host a playoff game on divisional playoff weekend. We came that close to it. The Rams could have hosted the NFC Championship game. I know, against the Packers. Yeah. That's crazy stuff happens, we're finding out. Yeah. You know, when a seven seed is the first winner in a conference playoff race. In a conference tournament, if the first team to win it is a seven seed... You know, crazy things can happen. They, they become a step closer to reality. But but the Lions eventually prevailed. And uh, I cannot congratulate all those Michiganders that I met years ago. And honestly, I, the only thing that would be for me is if, if the Jets, who, as you know, have not made the playoffs. Kids have been born in bar mitzvah since the <laughs> Jets last made the playoffs. And um, and so, for me, Michigan winning a national championship and then the Jets winning 
a playoff game to get one step closer to the Super Bowl, that would have been something. But still, the Jets have been to the playoffs and won a playoff game in the last 30 years. The Lions have not. And to them, I say congratulations. Soak it in. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 